weeks ago. And Evan made this for me. It's our crown of purpose. And so the ladies that were here, I told them, we got a ladies in a man's crown. Because the message is for everyone. It's no particular person. So if you have your Bibles, we're just going to start with... I don't have a Bible. I need to get a Bible. Oh, well, you know what? You you could just listen. I'm only going to do a little bit of scripture. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, in um, Psalms 33, 11, um, I was going to ask, um, do you, Danica, want to do you want to read that for me? Oh, I Is sure that, can. Okay. That's okay. If you want to read, just say, <laughs> Lindy, do you want this Bible? Psalms what? 33, 11. Thank you. And I'll have somebody turn to Isaiah 46, 10. Julie, would that be okay for you? Mm -hmm. What is it? One more time, Isaiah. Isaiah 46, but I but go to you're gonna do nine and ten. I, okay. I only said ten, but nine and ten. Okay. Okay. And I think I'll sit up here. Is that okay, Dad? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the first one? Psalm, Psalm 33, 11. verse eleven. Annika, I think we're all good with that. You can read it however. Um, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. The counsel of the Lord stands forever in the thoughts of his heart to every generation. So that's young and old. We're all in that. The counsel of the Lord. So praise the Lord. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. Um, we'll give a minute or two for everybody if they want to find it or even on Facebook. And, and Julie's going to read that uh, for me. Forty-six. Yes, and it's start with nine and do ten also if you if you would. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Amen, and I Amen. like this. Remember this, God says in Isaiah. He says, I am God. He says this twice, and there's no other. There's none like me. I love the fact that he says it twice. He wants to emphasize it. He wants us to remember. He knows it. He wants us to remember it. And the Bible says, I love this, declaring the end from the beginning. That's amazing. And here we go again. This is another confirmation of what we just read in Psalms 33, verse 11. He said, my counsel shall stand, and what I will accomplish all my purpose. He will accomplish his purpose. So I, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you, and, and um, I got all these notes, so just ignore this little mess here. Pray God just blesses this. But basically, you know, God tends to speak to me in the morning. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll wake up, I'll be in a part of a, a part of a dream, and, and, and I'll wake up and I'll hear him speak. But this particular morning, I went in and had my coffee, and I took one sip, and the Lord just began to just start speaking to me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to try text this. I'm going to try write, you know. And if anyone's experienced that, many times you can't write fast enough. You can't think fast enough. And I'm like, I just hope I'll remember this thought. You know, I put down a thought, I'm like, God, I'm believing you'll, you'll bring that back, that thought, that life into that. So while I was sitting there and I was, and this was probably about three weeks ago, he just began to speak to me and he said, I want the people to understand I have a crown of purpose. 
for each of them. He's a personal God. He says, I have a personal plan unique for each one. And that is our crown of purpose. And that's why we put the lady and the man's because all of us, and we know what Jeremiah said. He said, before I was formed, he knew me. Now, I also, when we start thinking about crown of purpose, you know the book that comes into mind. Mm -hmm. Esther. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Esther. But actually, as the Lord began to speak to me, you reminded me of in Genesis, Joseph. Joseph was chosen out of all his brothers. Yep. And I, I sure wish we would think more about that. I've heard so many sermons on that about Joseph and you know, God picked them for a reason. Mm -hmm. The brothers had a lot of issues. Can I say amen about that? <laughs> yeah. So, and he also reminded me of David. <clears throat> right? Saul was picked by the people. Mm -hmm. And he was king. Mm -hmm. And he wore the crown. Yep. But God chose David yep. for the crown. A little different. And then he reminded me also of Daniel and the Hebrew children. Oh. It's amazing. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to get to it today, but in just chapter one, the amazing things that took place with Daniel because he purposed in his heart yes. to not defile himself. Right. And God took notice of that. But I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Esther. And um, the Lord just began to speak to me. And he said, what do you know about Esther? He's asking me. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm not a scholar, you know. I just, I, I'm so thankful I got a God, a father, a good father. He just, you know, we, we converse. You know that. You have those conversations with him. So he began to talk to me, and um, he said, what do you know about her? And I said, I know she was, you know, um, her parents were killed, you know. I know that she was an orphan. And then he said, but not without a father. Amen. 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 Right. And so, so as he was talking to me, he reminded me, he said, they didn't know the crown was made for her. The crown was, I would say, her destiny and her purpose. Yeah. Even when she was orphaned. He had those plans. The counsel of the Lord. The plans of the Lord stand forever. In that moment, when all this stuff happened, no longer mother and father, mm -hmm. brought into captivity, Mordecai adopted her. He took her in as a daughter. But the counsel of the Lord stands forever. No matter what's taking place in your life, the purposes of God are going to happen, are going to be fulfilled, are going to come to pass because of who he is. Amen. Hi, hello over there. Hi. Hi. We're talking about Esther, and we're talking about our crown of purpose. Oh, okay. okay. So, Sorry I'm late. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but before, she was an orphan, but the Lord spoke to me, but not without a father, a heavenly father, a father that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Yep. She wasn't wealthy in this world, but she was wealthy in the kingdom. That's right. She didn't have royal blood in the line of, for the palace, but she had royal blood in her for the kingdom. Amen. amen. And we say amen to that. Amen. amen. That's, that's me, you, and I don't know, in case there's some royalty here. <laughs> in the kingdom, there's a lot of royalty. Amen. Right amen. here. But um, he began um, to speak to me about the crown was made for her before they knew it. That would be before Esther knew it. And she's playing out in the streets when she's when Mordecai's taken. The crown is mm -hmm. there for her. Yeah. Before Persia knew it, before the king knew it, before Mordecai, he's raising her in the Lord, not knowing the crown of purpose for her, but believing that she would, before she was formed in her mother's womb, God knew her. 
And like Jeremiah said, the plans he got for us are good. What happens in this world might not be good. The enemy, sure enough, isn't going to give you the red carpet. But hallelujah, the Bible says, when you know him, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Mm -hmm. And the enemy can take, try to take you out, but you're not going any out any sooner than your appointed time in Christ. And that's the same thing. They were taken into captivity, yep. but God was working his plan. And I, I, I thought it was really cute when the Lord reminded me when Vashti wore the crown. <laughs> it was rest. Mm -hmm. She didn't know it yet. But so as as you know, and, and a lot of us know this, um, and he started speaking to me about the scripture, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So I, I know that in this world, he was just reminding me of to make sure that we focus on our purpose and not just our position. Many times, you know, people look at the position that they want, the platform that they want. And when they get there, they forget about their purpose. They forget why they're there. And the Lord said, don't forget. And so I, I, I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. And, and I guess you know what happens with Esther, mm -hmm. between about her and four to five hundred people, four, four to five hundred um, young ladies are competing for this title, competing for this place, this position. And the Bible says that Esther found grace wherever she went and whoever she was around. You only need the grace and favor of one. Mm -hmm. It will take you where you could never go. Amen. Amen. And so the the Bible um, talks about for like a year and a half, you know, they, they worked on their aroma, their, you know, that they would give a perfume smell. They they worked on, this was what was required to, to be in the presence of the king. They worked on their skin and everything like that. A year and a half. Now, I really don't know to how much time from the year and a half so she became queen because it doesn't tell you that. It just said she had a preparation of a year and a half. Do you think at any of that time she was thinking, where am I going with this? <laughs> what am I doing here? But the Bible says she found grace and favor. And the Bible says she didn't take anything with her other than what the, the one over um, said. I forget what his name, Haggai, I don't remember. But whatever he said to do, she said to do. So she was a humble person. Mm -hmm. She didn't go in there with a lot of ego, a lot of pride. Right. You know, hey, all you, you know, I'm the one. I'm it. No. <laughs> <clears throat> and so I'm sure Mordecai raised her in the Lord, you know, and, and she understood the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So I just wanted to say, and then... There came that time where the Bible says the king saw her and immediately she finds grace. He loves her more than anyone else. And he set the crown upon her. And though the crown was pretty, I'm sure, it was symbolic to the crown of purpose mm -hmm. that she was truly wearing it for a reason for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, the whole time, Mordecai is checking on her, if you remember. He's going to the gate. How'd my girl do today? You know. And um, the whole then, then Haman, the enemy, you know, he, he's got to come in the picture somewhere, you know. So meanwhile, Esther's in this palace. And I would like us to go to the very first chapter. I noticed this today, which I'm sure you probably did, but I said, I wanna bring this out. Now, this is an ESV. Before I go into um, Mordecai and Haman, I would like to go ahead and start with chapter one. Now, I'm only gonna bring out certain things. In the very first verse, it talks about the king. And he reigned from India to Ethiopia. This is in the very first verse. 
over 127 promises. Promises. How do you say that? Promises? Promises. 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 <laughs> I said to find the other day. I don't know what. Don't but anyway, so, and it goes down in verse uh, 4, and it talks about he showed the riches of his royal glory, the splendor, and the greatness for many days. 180 to be exact. He had this big party, okay? And the Bible talks, it begins to talk about everything that he, he had there, what he did, the feasting from small to great. But in verse 6, it begins to talk about there were white curtains, violet hangings fastened with cords of fine linen, purple to silver rods, and marble pillars. And I just stopped this when I heard this. It was on audio and couches of gold. I'm like, wow. When was the last time you went in a place like that? <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, here's Esther. You know, they, they, were, they were brought in from captivity. Here is Esther in this palace. And, th you know, you have to realize they're only describing one place, one entry, you know, the feasting place. And it was a palace many places and we might get into that later which is very interesting I found that out early when I was reading this but so this is going on could you imagine Esther her faith's got to be in God this was not her people this was not how she was brought up you know and what changes she had to be willing to make and the Lord began to speak to me about us individually. What changes are we willing to make versus not willing to make? And that makes all the difference to where we're going to go, to where we need to be. Because just think, if Esther, I don't, I don't want to do this for a year and a half, he might not even pick me. What am I going to do after that? I don't know if her time was ticking for her, you know, I don't know. She was young. But what I'm trying to say is she trusted God for the journey. She trusted God that year and a half. And then, I mean, here she comes. He puts the crown on her. She's going to trust God, God the whole way. And I was thinking to myself, the Lord always speaks to me. I'm always telling God what I can't do instead of what I'm willing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, maybe not with you, but if anyone knows me, that's the two, I can't do that. <laughs> and he's saying, are you willing to show up? Are you willing to try? He's saying, because I'll be there with my power, my presence, my glory, myself. And all he's saying is, are you willing? But every time he tells me to do something, and you know what? The enemy, he's, he, he agrees with me. You can't do that. You're right on that. That's the only time you'll hear him say you're right. <laughs> if it goes along with his plans, right? <laughs> but that's not the will of the Father, the will of the Lord. And, and Esther didn't do that. Because just think, when they collected all these women, you know they had to know why they were going there. And that was not her faith. You don't know what that castle looked like. Like when it talks about Daniel, the Bible says, which I didn't want to go in without reading it, but the Bible says he wouldn't eat the choicest food of the king. It was given to them. He would not have the king's power. He says, I will not defile myself. And he went head to the, the one that was head over. He says, I'll tell you what. He says, he says, I'll do this. I'll eat this. And the man's like, hey, I like my head. You know the story. <laughs> They'll lose their head if anything goes wrong. He says, test us for 10 days. And do you know that they were trained for three years? I didn't know that one time I was reading. You might. Um, that the Hebrew children and Daniel, they were educated and they were prepared for three years. 
And the Bible says everything that they did, the talents, the intellect, being able to interpret dreams and visions was 10 times better than anybody else in, in that palace. And you know what I felt like the Lord spoke to me? God didn't ignore what they did. He honored their commitment. He honored their faithfulness. He honored their zealousness. He, he honored their confidence when they said, here's what I'll do. Because who are they? They're taken into captivity also. They're in a land that's not theirs. They're in a place where it's not their faith. Who knows? Maybe that you, the one over, maybe he got into the faith. Maybe he gave his heart to Almighty. Because, I mean, they trusted Daniel. The Bible says he found grace in his eyes. And what I find interesting is so much he didn't fear losing his head. And then God proves it. God comes forth and gives them 10 times better. Isn't that an amen? Mm -hmm. You know, amen. So I, I forgot where was I at with Esther. <laughs> where was I at with Esther? Um, she didn't know what the palace was going to look like. Yes, amen. She did. But um, she, well, he, he crowns her, you know. And um, I was just thinking to myself, you know, what do you do then? Did anyone give her agenda like the people in England, you know? Here's your agenda for today. <laughs> but the Bible says, you know, um, Haman found out that Mordecai wasn't bowing when he was passing. They told him bow. So Mordecai is not bowing down to Haman. And you, you know Haman is a descendant of who Saul, God told him, um, to um, get rid of all those people and Saul was in disobedience he didn't so the descendant came back later which was Haman oh, you know and the Bible says that when he found out that Mordecai wasn't bowing he was just I can't I can't do nothing until he is killed and the Bible says he wasn't happy with just him he said his people he wanted to go clear them all out. He's like, I can't do anything until this is done. So he begins this plan, okay? And what happens is um, he gets the king to sign by being deceptive to sign this order. There's these people. You need to get rid of them. So, so then they, they find out they're going to be destroyed. King signed the law. And so what happens is Mordecai puts on sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. Esther sees it. She knows. And I imagine all those close to her knew her faith because the servants would be her communi communication between her and Mordecai. And so the Bible says, she says, okay, here you go. Give him some new garments. That's all he needs, right? So she gets together some new garments and has a servant sent it down to him. But we know a new wardrobe isn't what he was looking for. And the Bible says he sends back the message. Okay, you need to talk to the king. Now, we just talked about the palace and how beautiful it was. Yes, she was raised with faith. But I think she was in the palace getting a little bit comfortable, getting a little bit too used to the life. Because the Bible says she sends back, I haven't seen the king for 30 days. Do you know what happens? I can't go to the king. Because do you know what happens? If you go to the king without being summoned, Mordecai sends back, don't think. that you will too be spared. You know, I was telling them in the classes that we had a couple weeks ago, God will have a Mordecai in your life to remind you what your purpose is. 
Because we do forget. I forget, you know? But Mordecai reminded her that day, who knows if you don't have this position for this purpose, mm -hmm. the crown of purpose. Mm -hmm. Not just the crown to be the queen, but the crown of purpose for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he reminded her of that. And all oh, the faith kicked in, right? And you know, she said, "Well, I love the what I love." And her response is, "Okay, we're all gonna fast. We're all gonna pray." Now she didn't ask them; she told them. Mm -hmm. And everybody in her group, the ladies that were helping her, her servants, they also were required to fast and pray. So when people say, "God's not," In, he's hidden in this in this Esther, in this book. I don't think so. He's all over this book. <laughs> I mean, they're fasting. They're praying. And did you notice the number of days that they use? Three. Do you know, if you know me, I love the number three. Resurrection. Is that not true? about our Lord Jesus. But what I find very interesting is they are on their way to death. All the people were to be killed. Isn't that so amazing, so prophetic that she says three days fast and pray. Now, um, I wanted to talk real quick about the, the sackcloth and ashes. Um, I don't know, you might know, so if you do, bless you, I'm gonna read, you know, I'm gonna just talk about this. But the sackcloth was a very uncomfortable material to wear. It was itchy, it was coarse, and it was rough. So they would put that on and the ashes, and it was all about, about um, humbling yourself. It was about a visible sign of repentance. It was visible to what? Everybody around? And it was visible to the Almighty. Yeah. And wearing the, by wearing that clothing, you know, and bowing down, lowering themselves, they're saying, forgive me, Lord. I've sinned. We've sinned. Forgive me. Turn back and look at us. Now, I want to, um, if I can find it, there is a song that David said about sackcloth. Uh, bear with me as I find that psalm. Desiree, if you happen to remember, I think it might be Psalm 140. For some reason that comes to mind. David speaks it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. I could, I could wait till later. Um, Oh, yes, here it is. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You could turn to it if you want. Psalm 140, verse 7. I have it written, and I'm going to read the line. Oh, that's, that's what covered my head in the battle. That's something different, but we could go ahead and read that. It has to be in here. I just don't know which one. Well, um, it's about David. Uh, I can't find it, but put Desiree on the spot. You don't remember what song that is, Desiree, do you? No. I'm surprised I don't have it anymore because I don't see it. But okay. Okay, I'll go by memory. 3513. Okay. You would try it? I don't know. I was just wondering. Can you, can you, can you look it up for me? Psalm 3513. Yeah. I, I just, I'm surprised I don't have it. It might be in here. And, and they were sick. I wore Oh, I see. Yeah. It says Psalms 30, verse yeah. 11, but 13 is probably a good. Just read Psalm 30, verse 11 through 13. I just see it right here now. It says, read this. <laughs> it's on the last. 
line here. Read this. Psalm 30, verse 11. Do you want to read it, wait, Jamie? Wait, wait, wait. I have to get there. Oh, no, it's okay. I was Googling. That's why I was. No, no, no. It's okay. Wait. 11 to 13, whatever you were saying. Psalm 30? Mm -hmm. That's what mine says, unless I made a mistake. 30, verse 11. 11? Mm -hmm. There's only 11 and 12. There is no 13. So, okay, oh. so 11 12. Okay. You Thank have, you, Lynette. You're welcome. You have turned from me, mm -hmm. my mourning, into dancing. Mm -hmm. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. You want 12 too, right? Mm -hmm. That my glory might sing your praise and not be silent. Mm -hmm. O Lord, my God. I will give thanks to you forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And mine, it must have been ESV, I don't know. It says, you removed my sackcloth. And whenever I was talking to the ladies, the Almighty reaches down. He receives the repentance, gives the forgiveness. And what's he do? Removes the sackcloth <clears throat> and ashes. And like, like <clears throat> Jamie said, <clears throat> And he turns my mourning, glory to God, into dancing. Mm -hmm. And that is victory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So as um, I also wanted to bring out, um, in case you didn't know, you probably know this. Esther means a star in Persia language. In Hebrew, Esther means to hide, to conceal. So I find it very interesting if you know Esther's real name was Hadassah and she changed to Esther and she was told not to reveal her identity. So I was thinking, which I'm sure you're thinking, she was a star in hiding. Amen. Amen. And that's what we are in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, so I wanted to... Um, Say so. She, I wanted to go to chapter five of Esther. I hope I'm not going too long. I don't know how long I am. Is there a clock here? Oh no, we don't have one. We always, it's on the other side. We always have one. So. It's ten Sorry. after seven. Okay, so oh, I'm still good. Yeah, because it was six thirty to start. Okay, so we were talking about the three days, right? I love this. Oh my goodness, I love this. Chapter 5, verse 1. Everybody say, on the third day, on the, the third, third day, day, Esther put on her royal robes mm -hmm. and stood, oh my goodness, in the inner court of the king's palace. Now, first of all, I got to say one thing. She didn't come in and wear what she came in from the beginning, right? She didn't wear her jeans and t-shirt, right? <laughs> and what I love the fact is she wore her royal robes. And she wore the crown. Who put it on her head? The king. So when she's coming, she's reminding him of his choice. And she's reminding him that she was picked out of all the four to 500 women. And she's also doing a step of faith, which the Lord was speaking to me. Put on your royal robes of righteousness, whether you feel it or not. Amen. Put your crown of purpose on, whether you feel it or not. Because it was a bad day in the palace. The rumors were pretty big, right? <laughs> we're gonna be killed. And you know, she probably was hungry fast in three days. But on the third day, she stood in the inner court. And I got to tell you something. I don't know if anyone knew this. Desiree, I don't know if you knew this. Desiree knows a lot about the Old Testament. But I was listening to the word this morning. I like to listen to on audio. You would laugh at my house. I got worship in the background. I got the word on audio and I'm praying. But I was like, all three? I'm like, yeah, when I stop praying, I can hear the word. And I said, and, and the word's only high enough, you know, for me to hear what I need to hear. 
And then when I want to start singing, I break out in the worship, <laughs> I got the worship on. You just got a constant of just the atmosphere Amen. of worship. Especially if I know I'm going to be somewhere speaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, and my, my cat's got to deal with it. You know? <laughs> a lot of times they go to sleep, you know, after, after they cry for a while. Because we have a, a young cat, and the young cat wants attention. But the worship put them right to sleep, you know. But I did not notice. Did you notice this? That she stood in the inner court. Do you know that Haman, he was, when he wanted to get a, a, a hold of the king, you know, he would be in the outer court. Mm -hmm. So when we know Jesus, when we know our God, we're in the inner court. Amen. The enemy is the outer court. So I thought that was interesting. And I looked this up. It said the inner court was access, it was the place that was access or brought access and was tightly restricted, but it gave direct, listen to this, it gave direct access to the king. Oh my goodness, she's in the inner court, the ac yeah. access directly to the king. And how did it do it? This is what they said, with a straight line of sight to the throne. Yeah. Wow. Because remember, when she stood in the inner court, he's like, he sees Esther. He forgot about his law. <laughs> Hallelujah for that. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because she had grace yeah. and faith from the one that matters the most. Mm -hmm. And when it's poured on you, it's going to be in vision to all that see you. And, and when I read that, I was like, oh my goodness, I've never read that. I don't know, Desiree, have you ever seen that? When she was in the inner court and she had, and I, I was reading about, they said the way it was. Um, it says, this is the final doorway which Esther would have to gone to enter the throne room. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm thinking. We as his daughters, we got access in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Direct vision access. We're in the doorway, the inner court, right in vision to the throne. And you know what that the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace, that you might obtain help when you need it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I also wanted to say another thing, 5 verse 2 says, she won favor. And the word won, she won favor with the king. And that word W-O-N, won, that's victory. Now, even though victory wasn't going to be until after those two nights of dinner, when she says, save me and save my people. Mm -hmm. Hey, she saw victory that day, but the Bible says she won it. She won his favor. So I felt in the spirit, she won it that day. Mm -hmm. She might not have seen it. You know, it's just like, you know, the battle, um, the Lord was reminding me about Joshua and them. Um, they had to march. He says, I want you to march. They had to do that for six days. The seventh day, you could, they, he said, you got to shout too. So they were marching and shouting, right? On the seventh, well, the seventh day. But then he spoke to me. He said, after that, it's my turn. So all that she did, she, you know, and she made that dinner, you know, and sometimes... The Bible says in, in um, Psalm 23, he prepared the table before my enemies. Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death. Wasn't that like the shadow of death? Thou art with me. She wasn't alone. We're not alone. We're never alone. And sometimes you got to sit at the table crossing the enemy but know who you are in Christ. Amen. She knew who she was in God. She wore her robes. She wore her royal robes and her crown of purpose. Hallelujah. A star in hiding. And um, there is so much more to talk about. I just want to say um, one more thing. I want to also just, just add a little bit about Joseph. What I found amazing with Joseph 
was what his brother said. If you um, go back and read the story, I can give you the verse if you need it. And we'll probably read that if we ever get together again. But basically, when they threw him in the well, mm -hmm. they said, what's going to become of these dreams now? Oh. Isn't that just like the enemy? Mm -hmm. yep. Isn't that just like the devil? But the destiny was in the hands of God. What do we talk about? The plans of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. Mm -hmm. If God has said you will do it, he's going to bring it to pass. But I thought to myself, so when people talk about you know, like Joseph, you know, um, being favor and everything like that. And I'm just saying, all I'm saying is you better look at what those brothers did. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and and um, I just thought that's just like the devil. They thought that they were going to kill his destiny. Being jealous and angry and everything like that, it's not going to do anything. What God has called to live will live. Amen. So um, I... I'll take a little bit of break in this because there's a lot more. I, and I, I know I gave us a lot of information and we didn't get to the table. Do you want me to? There's so much, though. Because <laughs> Mordecai, too. Um, I wanted to talk about Mordecai also. Um, how Mordecai had a crown of purpose also. Mm -hmm. And I'll just stick this in a little bit, if you don't mind. But Mordecai wore the crown of purpose mm -hmm. when he was raised in Hadassah. Yeah. And when she was called to go up, don't you think that was a little bit hard? He had to trust God to take mm -hmm. care of this Hadassah. Mm -hmm. He had to believe that God had a purpose for this moment. Because the Bible says he wore the crown of purpose the whole time. He went up How'd she do today? He would stand at the king's gate. He would check on her. And that was, like I said, a year and a half to two years. And then she became the queen. And then he was still hanging out there so she could see him. Because when she, when he wore the, and, and then the crown of purpose was to put on the sackcloth and ashes. There's a time to seek the Lord. I mean, it's not like you put that crown on and you just parade around. You got to march sometimes. You got to seek him. You know, you got to shout sometimes. You, you know, you got to obey the Lord. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But he will follow up. You know, he will follow up with his power. And I remember um, <laughs> what I think it was, I don't know which, when we were talking about David, I also wanted to talk about David also. But it matters to God what you do. Mm -hmm. When people say, oh, it don't matter. He's, he's not watching. He's not listening. He rewards those that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. He rewarded da um, David. He re rewarded Daniel. He rewarded Joseph. Wherever Joseph went, he was blessed. He was in the prison. He was blessed. They turned the keys over to him like, you know what? I think you can run this. I trust you. Wherever he went, he was blessed. When he chose not to defile himself with another man's wife, he, you know, he was thrown into prison. God remembered him. God don't forget about you. Amen. And he rewards you. So, but um, I don't know. Maybe I could come back another time and finish it, yeah, you know, great. whenever. And we'll try to remember where we lay out. Because there's, there's so much more information. Um, like Joseph, Daniel. I mean... You know, I think one more time might be able to do it, you know. But um, so whenever you're having a bad day, say, I'm a star in hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. And we have access to the inner court. Mm -hmm. And we've got the throne and vision. Mm -hmm. And we got royal robes of righteousness. And we got a crown of purpose with God's <laughs> blueprints uniquely made for our life. That's an amen. amen. And I was also telling the ladies, you know, um, well, I, I'm a little bit older than some of you, and, and um, 
I needed this message too. Because I think, what do I do now? My kids are all grown. You know? What is my calling still? What is my position still? What is my purpose? And when I read that to all generations, I'm like, okay. Oh, young and old, right? If I didn't call her, I'd be great. <laughs> so hallelujah. So um, those on Facebook, if anybody join us, God bless you. Any prayer requests, just send them. We'll pray. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And 